In this video, I will explain the main functionalities of the analysis interface of DMI's Twitter Capture and Analysis toolset, also known as TCAT. The TCAT interface is divided in different blocks with different functionalities. While the first block allows you to select and filter datasets, the second block provides a quick overview of the data. Below that, there are many modules to export the data. Such exports range from statistics and activity metrics, which are usually in the form of frequency tables, to the export of full sets of tweets, as well as network data and experimental modules. I will discuss each of the, these in more detail. The first thing to do is select a data set. In the drop-down menu, you can see data sets, also known as query bins, which are grouped by data type. You can furthermore see how many tweets the dataset contains, as well as the date of the first and the last tweet in the query bin. So this is for example the dataset on drones, it has 13,861,271 tweets, ranging from 16 November 2011 to 28 November 2014, so it's still capturing uh, new data. To see for which queries tweets have been collected for a specific query bin, just select the data set and click Update Overview. For example, when we select the data set Drones, we can see that tweets with either the words uh, Drone or Drones are captured. And this also includes tweets which contain uh, either the hashtag Drone or hashtag Drones. So both words and the hashtags of those words are found. So as you can see, the queries for this data set are very wide and underspecified. And many different types of tweets will be in the data set, as long as they contain the word drone. So with over 13 million uh, tweets, it is impossible to analyze them all at once, let, let alone to read them. As a rule of thumb, keep in mind that the more tweets you'll be analyzing, the slower the tool will be, especially if many people are using the same server at once. You'll thus have to use a combination of quantitative and qualitative analysis to characterize your data set. And this is where the select parameters come in. They allow you to make a sub-collection of your data set based on specific parameters which coincide with your research interest. You might, for example, be interested to explore the data in a specific time frame and to only get data related to a particular event, such as an incident, conference, or media campaign. A big part of your analytical endeavor will already be done through queries and filters in this uh, specific box. So let me show you an example. Using the drones data set, I want to give an overview of the number of tweets in the last year. So I set the start date and the end date. And click update overview. And I've already pre prepared um, some of these queries uh, because uh, as the data set is so big, uh, some queries may take half a minute to a minute uh, to complete. So once the interface is updated, I can already get some interesting information from the overview box. For example, I can see um, that in the last year, 7.9 million tweets were sent um, with either of the keywords by 2.4 million distinct users. And the graph below uh, shows the number of tweets with those words per day. And the most important lines are the blue one uh, and the red one. The blue indicates how many tweets were sent that day, and the red line how many distinct users have tweeted about it. And it becomes immediately clear that there is quite some volatility in the number of tweets about drones and that a few days have considerable spikes. Apart from the spikes, however, you can also see considerable lows. For example, at the end of July 2014, there were no tweets at all, uh, whilst it is a generally active data set, uh, with uh, tweets generally around t 20 to 30,000 uh, tweets a day. So when you see such a low, that does not mean that there are no tweets during those days, but that something was wrong with the server which captures the tweets and that we were thus unable to retrieve the tweets. And note, by the way, the, the green line um, and that it indicates that there are only very few tweets which are geocoded, and this is something which happens in almost all data sets. All right, now let's scroll back up and add another filter. 
besides the date. I know, for example, that Amazon at one point announced that it would deliver its parcels with drones. Has this been discussed on Twitter? Let's find out. Typing Amazon in the query field allows me to make a sub-selection of the dataset for tweets which, apart from drones, also contain the word Amazon. And here we can see that there were uh, 529,000 tweets sent which contain both drone and Amazon. Uh, and this was done by um, more than 330,000 unique users. So you can already see that for the query Amazon, there are relatively many more distinct users compared to what we previously saw. And this also means that for other subtopics, there probably are users who are more invested in the issue of drones, but then not related uh, for Amazon. So when a subcollection is made, or when a specific query is made, um, a second graph appears uh, beneath the main one. And in this graph, you can see per day the percentage of tweets for your query with respect to the full data set. And here we can clearly see that on 1 December, or on 2 December 2013, 75% of all drone tweets were about Amazon, but that Amazon quickly does not have a significant share uh, in the data anymore. Let's take a look at another example. Knowing that drone strikes often happen in Yemen and Pakistan, I look for tweets in the past year which also contain either Pakistan or Yemen. Note that in TCAT you can do a partial Boolean query, meaning that you can specify multiple additional words which have to appear in a tweet. If you write Yemen or Pakistan, tweets need to contain either of these words. And if you write Yemen and Pakistan, both words need to be in the tweet uh, together with uh, the keywords with which they were captured, of course. For more information about query formulation, uh, take a look at the FAQ, which is linked at the top right of TCAT. It is maybe already good to note that it's not possible to search in non-space separated languages such as Hebrew, Farsi and Arabic. For the query Yemen or Pakistan, there are 423,000 tweets sent by 159,000 users. And here you can thus see that when tweeting about the topic, users on average sent about 2.6 tweets. And we'll see more about this later. Let me first take you through the other filters. So apart from making a sub-collection of tweets which contain additional keywords, it is also possible to exclude, exclude tweets containing specific other keywords. So for example, I might have put Amazon uh, in this box uh, to make sure uh, the tweets are not about uh, Amazon parcel delivery. Also, it is possible to just see the tweets for a specific set of users or tweets sent from a particular Twitter client like TweetTech or Twitter for iPhone. And note that these filters are cumulative. So furthermore, it's possible to make uh, a subcollection of tweets which contain a specific URL or a part of a URL. If, for example, you'd like to get only tweets which refer to the New York Times, you could enter here newyorktimes.com uh, or you could enter uh, a deep link. The last filter available concerns geographical coordinates. It allows you to only retrieve geotech tweets sent from a particular location, but as noted above, Generally, only very few tweets are geotagged, so typically you would use this box when you are looking at a set of tweets gathered around geo-coordinates. So far for the selection box. There are two more things that I'd like to point out in the overview of the selections. The first concerns the pie chart, which indicates the percentage of tweets with and without URLs. And this can already give you a hint to how much external references are used. As tweets have a maximum of 140 characters, and shortened links take up 19 characters, links are thus an important carrier of information within a tweet. And if the percentage of links is very high, external sources are thus particularly important for your selection. The second thing I'd like to point out uh, is that by default the graph has a re resolution of a day, but that you can also get uh, a graph uh, displayed by hour or by minute. And this may come in handy if you are looking at small time intervals. So far for making sub-selections and getting a temporal overview of the data. Time for some more in-depth analysis. The analysis scripts come in three main flavors and the first concerns statistics and activity metrics uh, and they may be time-based, user-based or concern uh, content metrics. The second uh, allow for more um, 
qualitative content analysis, and the third concern, network analysis. And TCAT will do the extraction and counting for you, but as all outputs, files are in tabular or in network format, you'll have to use external programs to analyze them. So for the sake of speed and more straightforward analysis, let us just focus on uh, this first week in December. Um, and I've further specified um, the drones example with the query Yemen or Pakistan to just one month uh, in December 2013. And this results in uh, 78.5 thousand tweets by approximately 43 thousand users, distinct users. So the statistical exports uh, can be grouped in different intervals, uh, which you can do here. And this allows you to further specify the resolution of your analysis. By default, it's set per day, but you can also group over the full data set per hour, uh, per month, per week, per year, uh, and even custom intervals. And, and this, the latter is particularly useful if you are studying events I want to get statistics or frequency tables before the event, during the event, and after the event. And note that the grouping specified here applies on all tweet statistics and activity metrics up until the tweet exports. So let me show you how it works. So the first um, three exports are broad statistical descriptions. The first focuses on tweets and the second on users, as does the third. When clicking on the tweet uh, stats, you'll be directed to another screen where you can download the tabular file. After downloading and opening it in a spreadsheet program, you'll be presented with plain counts of the number of tweets. Um, the number of tweets with links, the number of tweets with hashtags, with mentions, retweets and replies. Note that each row presents the count per day. So if we go back to the previous screen and select overall and then relaunch, uh, the numbers will be calculated over our full selection um, as we defined above. Uh, which is one month of tweets which contain the word drone and either of the words Yemen or Pakistan. So let's uh, select overall and look at the second export with user statistics. you'll see minima, maxima, averages and means for different types of information about users. For example, you can see that each user in the selection has tweeted at least once and that at least one user has tweeted 1030 times about drones and Yemen or Pakistan. And that on average, uh, users tweet uh, about 1.82 tweets. Similar statistics are given for how many tweets uh, users sent with URLs, how many followers they have, how many friends, as well as their overall tweet activity. And note that these last three are not necessarily related to the data set, but reflect the user's overall um, numbers uh, or activity on Twitter. Now let's go to the more medium specific analysis. And you can see that we have various kinds of exports focusing on specific elements within a tweet. There are hashtag counts, uh, user counts and mention counts, uh, Twitter client frequency, URL and host counts, retweet counts. Um, and some exports also combine these features, uh, such as um, the hashtag user, which counts the number of times specific users have used specific hashtags. Let me show you two examples. Right now I'm interested in uh, the top overall hashtags of our sub-selection. And remember that I have set the grouping to overall. Clicking the hashtag frequency exports, TCAT asks whether we want all hashtags or only hashtags which appear at least a number of times per group. I'll specify 10 as I'm currently only interested in the top hashtags. Uh, 
a file is downloaded and if we open it we see a reverse sorted list which indicates which hashtags, hashtags were used most overall. So the top four hashtags all relate uh, to our queries. Pakistan and Yemen are part of our sub-collection and drone and drones are words with which the full data set is collected. And note that the frequency of uh, Yemen and Pakistan seems to appear in more tweets than drone and drones combined. And here it's important to remember that the tweets were collected not only on the basis of hashtags, but on hashtags or words. We thus seemingly also have quite some tweets in which the hashtags Pakistan and Yemen appear, but where the word drone is not hashtagged. And next come the uh, hashtags with which we can start to characterize our data sets. The first is US, which is not strange as they are the ones who use drones over Yemen and Pakistan. And next is the hashtag PTI, which I don't know, however, by going to hashtags.org and entering PTI, you can often find out uh, what a specific hashtag is about. Um, and here we can see that PTI is a, an acronym of Photos That Inspire. Moving down, there are many other hashtags uh, which don't necessarily make sense, but later on I'll show you how you can look at these hashtags in context. And do note that there is a variety of hashtags ranging from countries to actors and to Twitter specific language like the PTI we saw earlier and good luck with that, uh, as well as some news sources, etc. Now let us take a look at another export. The one on user activity. Again, as this is a big data set and we're looking at the overall uh, data set, I'll select that I only want to see users which have tweeted at least 10 times. Interesting here is that from just reading the top usernames, Yemen Tags, DD, Rhone Zone, Quickie Leaks, Musa Milan War, UAV Drone Policy, Pakistan News, Noon Arabia, um, that you can see that there are quite a few Twitter accounts which deal specifically with drones uh, as well as where they operate. So there are many more. Uh, possibility or possible exports in this block and I won't go into them all uh, but just know that in this block you'll find frequency tables which are mostly focused on medium specific features and that in order to use them fruitfully you need to consider how these features are often used on Twitter so for example hashtags are often used to structure public conversation uh, and by using the hashtag frequency module you can thus find out which hashtags are most often associated with your subject at replies, on the other hand, um, convey who a tweet is directed to and using the user visibility module allows you to find out how influential uh, people are or just who is often addressed. The user activity module can be used to find out which users tweet the most. The URL and hostname uh, frequency tables might be used to characterize references in tweets as being commercial, news, uh, whether they point towards media platforms or even for topic-based classification. The frequency table for retweets can be used to see which tweets got most resonance, etc. etc. On a more general note, I'd like to mention that to drill down into a data set, it is advised to first look at the overall top hashtags, users, hosts, etc. and then consider grouping them with a finer resolution so that you can investigate variation over time and the information visualization mantra overview first and zoom in later often proves useful in data science too. Now let us go to the tweet exports um, where you will find a variety of ways to export your subselection. The exports can be used to more closely read your data and for various types of content analysis and both the full export and the a random export might be used to read through your tweets and to perform an emergent coding or categorization. Um, and such a categorization can be anything from content types, user types, sentiment, etc. But uh, I'm digressing. The most important exports here are the top two. A random set of tweets from selection and export all tweets from selection. 
And the letter will do just as it says and provide a table with all captured fields for each tweet. And if you have a big selection, of course, the full export can get huge. Here we have tens of thousands of tweets just for one month. Uh, so the table will contain tens of thousands of rows. This feature, however, is particularly useful if in your analysis of top hashtags or top users for, uh, you found peculiar ones about which you want to find out more. So how many of these tweets are tagged with PTI and uh, what is written in them? Why would somebody tag their tweets about drones and Yemen or Pakistan uh, this way? To get a quick idea of the tweets in your selection, however, you can also opt to look at 1000 random tweets. And depending on the size of your selection, this export will give you a representative sample of tweets. To also get expanded URLs, hashtags, or mentions in separate columns, you'll have to select them here, um, or just the URLs, for example. But you should keep in mind that adding those will take extra time before you can download them. So these are already in the tweets, but you can also get them as separate columns for easier analysis. And um, the, tw the URLs in the tweets are often t.co links uh, or bit.ly links, like shortened URLs. And by adding URLs and media, uh, by clicking this checkbox, uh, you'll also get the expanded URL. Clicking the export module, or any of the export modules, uh, will present you again with a new window where you can download the file. And I won't open the file now, but want to point you to the format of the file name. And we have constructed file names of all exports in TCAT in such a way that they always convey what's in the file. The file name will always start with the name of the dataset, so drones. Next, it will indicate uh, what the date range of your selections is. So from 1 December 2013 to 31 December 2013, as well as any queries or filters which you might have applied. At the end of the file name, you can see which export module you chose, in this case, random tweets, as well as a cryptic message uh, which conveys uh, which version of TCAT uh, is used to generate this. So when working with TCAT, you will produce a lot of files, and the file naming convention will make sure that you still know what data is in which file. Note also that I always use uh, LibreOffice to open my files, um, and this is a free and open Office software which also contains a spreadsheet program and I do this because uh, Microsoft's Excel for example has many problems with tweets which contain non-Latin Latin characters and will display them as unintelligible glyphs. Also LibreOffice can open spreadsheets with many many more rows than Excel or Google Spreadsheets can. Let me continue with the networks. Um, so the next block of modules contains the relational exports. And the ones you'll likely use are the mention network and the co-hashtag graph. The mention network is constructed by drawing a direct link from each user who mentions another user via an at reply. And the resulting network file can be opened in Gephi to find out who is influential and who is often addressed. How to get from a TCAT mention network file to a nice graph which can be interpreted is the topic of another video. So I'll just uh, point out uh, some other interesting modules. The co-hashtag module, for example, produces networks where a link is made between two hashtags if they appear in the same tweet. They can thus be used to find hashtags which are most often associated with a network, which hashtags often co-appear in tweets, and to find out whether there are topical subclusters. These closely related terms might then tell you something about the composition of an issue. And note that, um, for example, drone and drones uh, will always be in, this, uh, in the, in the co-hashtag network um, of this data set, as will probably uh, Pakistan and Yemen. So you can consider deleting at least uh, the words with which the uh, data set was constructed, so drone and drones, to more clearly see the different topics and the different clusters. Apart from the monopartite networks, where only one type of element is used, we also have many modules which produce bipartite networks, where different types of elements are linked. The hashtag URL graph uh, will make a connection between a URL and a hashtag whenever they appear in the same tweet, etc. The next block of modules 
uh, contains experimental modules. And these are particular visualizations which are still under development or just plain experimental. The Sankey Maker, however, is already quite useful as it allows you to plot the relation between different fields such as which hashtags are used most from which Twitter client, etc. So throughout this video I have explained the various types of exports which TCAT offers. Although many options are available, of course research projects will hardly ever require all of them. What is important to remember though is that TCAT allows for a quality quantitative approach and is set up in such a way that you can drill down big datasets easily.